Ara vorem să servim complet preoperativ asortiment. Mulțumesc că ați luat de hard risk, hard risk, um, de low risk, hepatic risk, um, nutritional risk, and metabolic risk, and renal risk. Renal. So on the heart risk, uh, I will begin by, by saying the Gottman scale. Remember, we have the ular venous distension, 11 points, prior myocardial infarction between the first six months, 10 points, um, a non sinus risk, 7 points, extra systoles from the ventricle. For more than five minutes, seven points. Age above 70, five points. Orient for emergency, emergency surgery, four points. Poor medical condition, three points. Aortic stenosis, three points. Surgery for the heart or abdomen. So these are the highest ones. Whenever a patient has uvular venous distension, we need first to treat them with uh, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, spironolactone, um, and sometimes digoxin before the surgery. If a patient has myocardial infarction, we will wait uh, up to six months, until six months. Certainly, if a patient has um, my father in fashion, we, we are putting him in a lot of stress now on the surgery. Alright, so also we have the revised cardiac risk index. This includes previous history of ischemical disease, previous history of um, of Ministry Heart Failure, Diabetes Mellitus, Stroke or um, Transient Ischemic Attack, Renal, Chronic Renal Insufficiency or Chronic Kidney Disease, that is the creatinine being more than 2 mg per deciliter, and the patients that are undergoing surgery on the thorax, uh, intraperitoneum, or on the supra, uh, supra inguinal vessels. Um, for these patients, more than two of these risks can be helpful to treat them with beta blockers preoperatively. So, preoperatively. Um, now, for the lung, we have the most important is the risk of the smoking. So we recommend patients to stop smoking six to eight days, uh, six to eight, eight uh, weeks before the, the surgery. If this is not possible, well, just to try to smoke less, or we could try to reduce the cigarettes of uh, cigarettes that they smoke a day by half or something like that, because it's very important that the patient understand that the uh, smoke is um, a very important factor and if the patient um, stops smoking even though it be just a month some weeks that will be very helpful very very helpful obviously more we could do it for six to eight days obviously more we could do it forever but that's the point and also the the smoking produces you know obstructive pulmonary disease chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and remember that in these conditions um, patients um, the central kidney receptors are already unsusceptible to the carbon dioxide concentration so only the hyperventilation is due to the peripheral kidney receptors but they depend mostly on the oxygen partial pressure so they 
uh, for example, in the intubation, the patient is intubated, and so there is the space, and so there is um, increased oxygen, so there will be less drive in the peripheral immunoreceptors to hyperventilate. So it, will, it is very difficult to extubate patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Also, patients um, can do insensitive spirometry or can have expectorants. Um, in physical therapy. And the most uh, important study for this is the third one the first respiratory volume in one second and yes the blood gas analysis but now we have oximeter so the most important will be the third one in the hepatic risk we will look for ascites albumin bilirubins clothing clothing factors encephalopathy um, we will be testing more like cirrhosis, a IN, INR for the clothing, and um, albumin. So if the patient has albumin less than 3 grams per deciliter, bilirubins above 2 milligrams per deciliter, uh, encephalopathy, or a PT time above 16 to 18 seconds, just one of these, there is 40% risk. If the patient has three of these, then it passes to 80 to 85% risk. Now, uh, if the patient only has a albumin concentration of greater than four uh, grams per deciliter or less than two grams per deciliter, or the ammonium concentration is above 150 milligrams per deciliter, this also increases the risk to 80 to 85%. And if we have the four of these, it increases the risk up to almost 100%. Um, for the, the metabolic, um, metabolic problems, here I will just say that the indication and there are contraindications for surgery. One contraindication would be the uh, um, cetacidosis. Of diabetic cetaceosis, we need to correct the cetaceosis before going to the operating room. But on the other hand, we have sepsis. Sepsis would, um, would be an, an indication for surgery. In, in sepsis, the parameter will never come back to normal if the patient has not finished or we have done the sepsis. Then the nutritional risk. With the nutritional risk. Now, the nutritional risk is just if the patient is poorly um, severe malnutrition, like more than 20% weight loss in the past six months, um, and the patient has allergy to some important foods like salmon, something like that, or the patient uh, has a albumin concentration of less than 3 grams per deciliter or a transferring concentration of less than 200 mg per deciliter or a prealbumin concentration of less than 16 mg per deciliter. This is severe malnutrition. We can correct this just by um, giving one to two weeks of enteral nutrition, but if we cannot wait too long, we could just do it with four to five days. And this is most of the preoperative things that we need to cover for a patient. The most important is the risk of cardiac, uh, the smoking is a very important issue, everything is a very important issue. Uh, and just for the renal, um, um, for the renal uh, risk, I just missed to say, we need to hydrate the patient before surgery and and during the surgery because the patient can develop acute tubular necrosis and even more there will be release of renin and utensil aldosterone system and so there will be further constriction of the renal vessels. Uh, for patients that are undergoing dialysis we need to dialyze them 24 hours before the surgery and if for example the patient has troubles with the heart or things like that 
and days day emergency surgery um, we we usually try at least to wait one day to try to put everything in order like give the medication for congestive heart failure etc just one day before the surgery